tu dekat speaker jadi apa-apa pengenalan tu kita buat uh, cepat sikit lah daripada time. Okay. So kita boleh mula eh Dr. Eh? Boleh boleh silap. Okay. Si. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qali. Honorable Speaker, uh, Dr. Syahriza Mat Sharif uh, from uh, University Terengganu, Malaysia. Um, and my fellow colleagues, professors, associate professors, uh, doctors, brothers and sisters. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Get more barakah, let us begin with uh, Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Alhamdulillah, welcome everyone to the training on alternative assessment. Uh, before we start, I wish to introduce uh, to us, all of us, uh, the speaker of today's session. Let me share the screen. Okay. So today, uh, we are going to listen to Dr. Shahriza in Ahmad Sharif from University of Malaysia Terengganu on alternative assessment. Uh, okay. So this is some of his background. Yeah, his current position uh, right now is a lecturer in Fakulti Perikanan dan Sains Makanan University of Malaysia Terengganu. Uh, the Director of Center for Talent Development and Innovation, University of Malaysia Tengganu, UMT. Uh, the Committee Member for Majlis Kerjasama Ketua-Ketua Pusat Pengajaran dan Pembelajaran Magnetic. And he is also uh, the UMT Outcome-Based Education Advisory uh, Committee. And Committee Member of Alternative Assessment Book uh, with the Ministry of Higher Education. And some of his previous work experiences. Uh, he was the jury for Anugerah Khas Yang Berhormat Menteri Pendidikan Malaysia, uh, the category of reka bentuk curriculum dan penyampaian inovatif 2022, just last year, bagi category pengajaran transformatif. Uh, he was also the deputy chairman for selection committee, Anugerah Khas Yang Berhormat Menteri Pendidikan Malaysia, reka bentuk kekelem dan penyampaian inovatif bagi uh, kategori pengajaran transformatif. He was also the jury for uh, USM MOOC Challenge last year, 2022. The jury for International Putra Inno Creative Carnival in Teaching and Learning uh, also last year. And there's a lot more. But we, if you want to know more, you can get to know Dr. Shariza and ask him, yeah, inshallah. So this is our uh, statement, mission statement of IIUM. Uh, we have seven mission statement. And this, this uh, training is mapped to the fourth statement, which is to nurture the quality of holistic excellence, which is imbued with Islamic moral spiritual values in the process of learning, teaching, research, consultancy, publication, administration, and student life. So some gentle reminders, yeah. We will share the uh, I attend later. Please register your attendance. Uh, we will share the link every maybe every ten minutes, uh, and then kindly fill in the evaluation form at the end of the uh, training, yeah. And you may unmute your microphone or write in the chat box to ask any question. Uh, do you prefer during the session or after the session, doctor? If, if uh, anyone wants to ask question. Sorry, I forgot that I mute the mic. Uh, they can ask me anytime. It's okay. Oh, oh. Uh. Inshallah. Okay, thank you. So, welcome everyone. Ahlan wasahlan to the training. Uh, we hope we can enjoy uh, and learn a lot from uh, Dr. Shariza. So, Dr. Shariza, um, the floor is yours. Tafadali. Tafadal. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wirawani, and uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm very grateful uh, to Allah uh, 
uh, for having this opportunity eh, to be with uh, IIUM uh, lecturers and also uh, participants uh, in this opportunity to share uh, things regarding alternative uh, assessment. So let me share my slide first. How, how is it at the IIUM right now? Is it still hot? Because uh, for us last night, it was a heavy rain uh, with a heavy thunderstorm and a lightning. Oh, we have been this morning. Last night was very hot. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> so hope that everybody can see uh, the slide. <clears throat> well, uh, today uh, I was uh, invited by IAUM to uh, <clears throat> give uh, a talk and also uh, the objective is to, to do a bit of a workshop uh, in the hope that the uh, it will assist lecturers in uh, developing <clears throat> their alternative assessment. <clears throat> so uh, today, what we're going to have is, uh, I'm going to give an understanding about alternative assessment, as well as uh, its relation to constructive alignment, because uh, whatever that we want to do, we must make sure the purpose is clear and what we are assessing really focusing and enables us to see the performance of the student towards the intended learning outcome. <clears throat> so this is what we're going to uh, see today. And uh, second is to assist uh, participants uh, in developing their own alternative assessment for student assessment. And uh, I'm uh, confident and I'm sure some of you have already understand and already conduct alternative assessment. But uh, based on my experience uh, sharing the talk about alternative assessment to other universities and also uh, discussing with my colleagues in UMT. And I'm also confident that some of you actually didn't notice that you already conduct alternative assessment, but you think that you haven't done it yet. So we'll try to see. Uh, we hope that through this, uh, the first part of the explanation, <clears throat> we could clear the air regarding what alternative assessment is all about. <clears throat> and to see whether some of you have already conducted the, the alternative assessment. And the second thing is whether it is conducted in the proper way. So <clears throat> again, just to, uh, to introduce a bit about myself, um, as uh, Dr. Wirawani uh, mentioned just now, uh, my field is in fish genetics and Currently, I'm uh, at the Faculty of Fisheries and Food Science. Now, regarding this for today's activity and also for uh, even after this uh, talk, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. This is my uh, phone number. You can WhatsApp, you can call or telegram me at this 019-286-7794. Okay, or you can email me. And uh, I really hope that uh, participants 
who are developing their alternative assessment who or who have any confusion about alternative alternative assessment can contact me because um, it will enable me to assist you because uh, in within these three hours, some of you might take some time to understand, to reflect what uh, you have gained from this webinar. And uh, you might also take some time to develop. Okay? And some of you might already able to develop your alternative assessment or refine your alternative assessment during this uh, webinar uh, come workshop. So what we are going to do today is I'm going to break this uh, talk into four sections. The first part that we're going to do today is understanding alternative assessment. Okay, And the second one, we're going to see what type of alternative assessment that we can do. Okay, Is there any category or any uh, differentiation between these uh, alternative assessment? And then, after a short break, we will go into how to develop your alternative assessment. And finally, we're going to summarize up. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> before we move further, so I would like to give some times, maybe two to three minutes, Okay, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to give a time, two to three minutes. Now, number one, uh, to all participants, please make sure that you have with you your course info. Okay, or some, they call it uh, uh, course syllabus. And uh, in IIUM, what do you call it, the, the, the course info, <clears throat> Dr. Wirawani? Course outline. Uh, course outline. Uh, so make sure to bring along your course outline because we're going to use it in the third section of this talk. <clears throat> and uh, the second one, <clears throat> I know that through my experience uh, attending webinars or uh, giving uh, webinars or talk, there are some participants who uh, join just to get an information. And I believe there are also some who join to gain their skills through the activities. So for those of you who really want to uh, focusing on increasing your skills, there are some uh, activities that we're going to do. And I hope that you can participate in these uh, learning activities, which will assist you in uh, the step by step in developing your alternative assessment. And the third one, my talk, uh, I plan to give it in a very simple manner, not too technical. And uh, the slides that I'm going to give is very uh, simple because I'm trying to uh, promote everybody to focus on referring to the book that uh, KPT has already Publish regarding alternative assessment. So this will be the reference for everybody, not only for IIUM, even for the other lecturers from other universities. So do refer uh, to this book in understanding and as well as developing your alternative assessment. Okay, <clears throat> now, why that I hope uh, participant would contact me and also uh, participate in this activity? Because we all know that in the uh, 70 2010 model for learning and development, we know that attending formal courses, the impact of uh, skills gain is lower compared to when you try to learn through experiential learning. So when you learn by doing and you discuss with others okay, through social learning, then you can increase your skills, your knowledge in doing the things that you are 
uh, focusing on. So that is why <clears throat> I would uh, welcome everybody, okay, uh, even after this, uh, to communicate. And this is what I've been doing uh, with uh, some universities after giving the talk. And uh, Alhamdulillah, some, a few of them, uh, not many, but a few of them are willing to uh, contact and I'm able to assist them in developing their alternative assessment. And also, not only alternative assessment, there are some also I'm assisting them in developing their uh, teaching portfolio and also their documentation for ACRI. So <clears throat> we know that there is no boundary. Uh, the learning does not limit within these three hours and learning can happen anytime. So this is what I'm trying to uh, promote so that the uh, community of learning will be highly uh, active and prolonged even though the uh, talk is over. All right? So, <clears throat> I will give this uh, the two ebook to the uh, secretary afterwards, but you can also uh, get this from this link. I've already uh, shared the link uh, to for the participants to get this uh, book that uh, I have introduced. Now, the other one is holistic learning. This was published way back in 2018. Now, not mistaken, published by a group of uh, individuals and the publication is from UM. So you can also have this book and refer to assist you in uh, developing your alternative assessment, right? Okay, so now let us go to our first part that is understanding alternative assessment. <clears throat> okay, uh, I will share the link in a chat <clears throat> to this uh, Google Jam board. So what I would like to request everybody is to <clears throat> share with me. What do you want to know about alternative assessment? So that within this uh, period, three hour period of time, if there are things that I plan to share does not cover what you want to know, then I can take this opportunity to uh, give the explanation. And number two, <clears throat> what are the confusions or issues that you have regarding alternative assessment? So <clears throat> give me a few minutes to... Put this link into the chat. and see whether you can assess this. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Jamboard, if you want to put a text, you can uh, use this, the one that has an icon here, the square with a letter T. So you can just click and you can add in, okay? And just uh, type. Or you can also paste a sticky notes over here. Okay, and uh, you can type and uh, save.
Okay, we give about two or three minutes for participants to share their uh, questions or any issues regarding alternative assessment. <clears throat> Okay, we have now two, but maybe the first one uh, is still in the process of uh, <clears throat> refining the question. Uh, okay, so currently two questions. Is this type of assessment suit any kind of course background? All right, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your inquiry. Second, Okay, I wanted to make the teaching and learning interesting, especially with the TikToks generation. Okay, that's that's good. <clears throat> and uh, actually, TikTok can be one of the alternative assessment that you can do, depending on the learning outcome. I can uh, I will share with you some ideas on how to go about with these uh, new generations of uh, students. Okay, there are some that are not familiar with alternative assessment. All right, thank you for your response. Okay, another one. What are the examples? Okay, we're going to look that at the uh, now when we go to section two afterwards. Okay, and then is this assessment acceptable and requires Senate approval to use? alternative assessment in the teaching and learning. Okay, this is good. Now, for this one, I can uh, straight away answer. The approval depends on the rules and regulation that has been implemented by IIUM. If, uh, again, with uh, in UMT also, we have certain rules and regulation. Some assessment that you wanted to change, let's say from your initial or original written exam, and you want to change them into making videos, then uh, you need to fill up uh, some uh, form. And uh, these minor changes is only need to be brought up to the faculty level that is in UMT. And the faculty will check under the committee and if the changes okay, from a written exam uh, to, let's say, a video presentation uh, as an alternative assessment uh, is similar and uh, caters for the intended learning outcome, then the approval is just up until the faculty. So you need to check with uh, your IIUM rules and regulation. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for us, changes in the Senate, if the changes is uh, major, we can say major changes, you want to change the whole content of the syllabus or the, uh, the, the course content, then if the changes is more than 30%, we need to bring up to the Senate. But for alternative, for assessment, minor assessment, there are also some that is flexible uh, in terms of the kind of assessment that you want to do. As long as the assessment caters for the intended learning outcome, so it's just uh, information and minute and approval at the faculty level. So you do, for this one, you need to uh, check with IIUM. Okay, another one not familiar. Okay, wondering is it will help students with learning difficulties? Uh, yes, of course. So along the way that we're going to go through, uh, through this section, I hope that you can see how alternative assessment facilitates learning among students. Okay, so thank you very much uh, we have here. For others, please put in because uh, along the way, we can, uh, uh, I can explain uh, when we go for each topic.
Okay. Now, if you move into the next page in the Google Jamboard, I need you to respond this before we go further. Now, you read the situation given in the Google Jamboard. There are two situations that I gave, and you only need to respond in the form of yes or no for each situation. Okay. So there are two situations. You can just go to the next uh, slide of the Google Jamboard. Okay. And uh, give your answer whether it is a yes or no. Okay. This one, for those of you who are not familiar, You can just move over here, the arrow on top that shows to the right. Then you can move and then paste in. Where is it? Ah, okay. There's extra. Uh, okay, here. Slide number three and number four. Okay, situation one. Okay, normally I conduct my test physical exam through written exam. That means you set up in the classroom, uh, you arrange the table so that the student won't cheat, and then you distribute the exam papers and uh, give them give them a duration of one or two hours. Then they will answer. So the exam is in written. It can be either structure or objective. Okay, or in a multiple choice. Now, as an alternative to my approach, I conduct my test. Okay, the written exam, but now using online tests. So, what do you think about this? Is this an alternative assessment? So we have one answer given already. Okay, now two participants answered no. One giving a, an explanation, still pen and paper exam. Okay, this one, yes, use online method or no, still the same. Okay. So, in this response, it says yes because you see that there is another option or method of exam that they can use, okay? But no, because it's still the, it's still the same exam question. Okay, all right. Not really an alternative assessment. Okay. <clears throat> right, you can answer both. Okay, we give, let's see if we have another two more response before we go uh, about into this uh, situation one. Now four, we have four respondents who answered no. Okay. One, it depends on the situation. Yes, it can be alternative because it is an alternative option apart from the physical, but it can also be no because it's still the same. Okay, for situation one, it is not an alternative assessment. Okay, so for those of you who write this, it's correct, it is not an alternative exam. Now, why I put this situation one, this is among the things that really happens in the universities. Okay, but not by all lecturers, some, a few, okay, one or two uh, lecturers who misunderstood about alternative exam, uh, assessment in which they think that this is just an alternative method. So now I normally conduct the exam physically, but because of PKP, so I use an alternative method. So... If the exam is still the same, the student needs to answer. The only thing is just in a different platform. 
So this is not an alternative assessment. Okay. <clears throat> so be clear of the exam that you want to do and differentiate between the platform. So it's just a matter of different platform, but it's still the same uh, the, uh, type of assessment. Now, number two, situation two, I can see some of them already answered. In my course, one of the learning outcomes is students should be able to present a technical report through oral presentation. So the learning outcome focus on communication skill. Due to this, I assess the learning outcome by student making an oral presentation. <clears throat> right. So one participant answered yes. Now another one, yes, no pen and paper, more flexible. Okay. And uh, the third one, yes, this can be assessed through verbal communication. Now, <clears throat> in this part, Yes, it is an alternative assessment. Why? Even though presentation is quite common, right? Uh, it is not a new thing. We ask students to present way back 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Presentation is also part of the assessment. But why? We don't call, we call, we consider them as an alternative assessment. Now, what I'm trying to show to you in this situation too is there are confusions among lecturers in which they thought that alternative assessment is a new thing. Uh, it is an innovative thing. Things that are not normally being done previously. Okay. Now, these are the misconceptions about alternative assessment. Alternative assessment is not an innovative procedures, okay? even though it can be innovative, but it is not the sole thing what we call and must be an innovative process. Alternative assessment refers to the assessment that enables us to see the performance of the student as what the intended learning outcome <clears throat> focus on. So in this way, if the learning outcome is trying to assess the ability of the students to make an oral presentation. That means you are assessing the student performance by looking at how they make the presentation and you create an assessment in which they need to present even though presentation is not a new thing. But when you assess student performance in relation to the skill set that you want to see, then it is an alternative assessment. <clears throat> Why <clears throat> there are confusion among lecturers? Because in some definition of alternative assessment, they call it an assessment that is not conventional. And they thought that when the term conventional, they understood that anything that has been done previously is considered conventional. Presentation is conventional. <clears throat> Project is conventional. So in this term, conventional in alternative assessment, referring to the pen and paper, because that is the previous standard type of assessment that we do. <clears throat> Anything that we do, we assess them through exam by asking them to enter the hall, the classroom, distribute the paper, and they answer. No matter what skills we are assessing, they need to answer them in a question paper. So this is what refers to as conventional. But any method that assess the performance of the student towards the skill set that is inside the intended learning outcome, <clears throat> and you can see them perform their skills, then that is what we call as alternative assessment. So, <clears throat> alhamdulillah, I can see that uh, in these two situations, uh, the participants who answered 
can see that situation number two is considered alternative, even though it looks conventional. Communication is, uh, is being done way back uh, previously. And the second one, the first one, even though it is conducted in a different platform, it is still not an alternative assessment because it is still in a pen and paper. And this situation number one is still a conventional method, even though it has been done in an online platform. <clears throat> okay, so now... So if you looked into what is alternative assessment, so alternative assessment is an assessment that is referred to as performance test or authentic assessment. That means similar to the real world situation. Performance test must not be confused with written exam because performance test refers to what are the skill sets that you want to assess and how do they perform on the skill set? So if they need to increase their skill in communication, so the assessment is being done through the communication medium. If you are trying to look into teamwork, so the assessment that, you are, that enables you to see how the teamwork is, this is what we consider as performance tests. But if, let's say, you want to see the teamwork, but the assessment is in a written form, that is not what we call as an alternative assessment. Okay. Now, there are some, when I go through with uh, a few lecturers, in which they, perf they do the right assessment, but they evaluate the wrong thing. Take, for example, they want to address, they want to assess teamwork in their learning outcome. One of the intended learning outcome is to assess teamwork. They have the task that is being given to the student, but what they evaluate is the report. So they don't evaluate the teamwork activities, but the one that they give marks to say that this individual shows or display a great teamwork, they assess them through the report. And the report is based on the rubric regarding the content of the report. So in this case, the task for the assessment is correct. The, the task allows the student to display their teamwork skills, but the evaluation that has been done towards that task is wrong because you are assessing the report and you are using the rubric to assess the content and not the teamwork. So when we say that refer to a performance test, we must be clear what performance that we are testing. And this refers to the skills that has been put up in the intended learning outcome. So it can be a performance test or authentic. That means you are creating an assessment that is similar to the real world situation. For example, what does it mean by real world? If they need to uh, do assessing teamwork, you give a project in which they need to organize a seminar and where the participant, for example, are coming from outside of the university. That means real world situation, uh, actual seminar, it's not a simulation. And through there, you assess their teamwork. That is what we call as authentic, right? Now, another one is assessment that is other than the paper and pencil test quiz. That means any skill sets that you do and you are not assessing them through paper and pencil. Right, like I showed you to you just now. If teamwork, you give them a task. If presentation, you ask them to present. 
you don't ask them to uh, write. Or like the one that uh, was asked by the participant, uh, is it suitable for any field? Yes, engineering, for example. Do you remember you have lab tests? So for engineering or science uh, lecturers who have lab exam in which they need to conduct a certain procedures, that is alternative assessment. It is lab work or lab test is part of performance test. You see how do they perform to conduct certain process or skills based on the intended learning outcome. But if your intended learning outcome is student were able to display uh, fixing a certain thing or building up certain models in engineering, but you're assessing them through written exam, explain how to build a car, then they just explain. That means it doesn't, the test doesn't reflect their performance. It only reflects what they know, but are they able to do it? Okay, and depends on the intended learning outcome. Okay, in this second thing on what is alternative assessment, don't get confused when there are in certain learning outcome that can still be assessed using paper and pencil. So paper and pencil is not 100% irrelevant. That's why I said it depends on the learning outcome that you want to do. For example, people relate pen and paper as a test where it only assess the student memorization. True. But take for example, if in language examination, where you want to see students should be able to write uh, Jawi, okay, for sure you need to do pen and paper because that pen and paper exam is suitable to the intended learning outcome. Students should be able to write Jawi, okay. So you have an exam, you give a certain uh, question, and they need to write. So look at what the intended learning outcome is all about, <clears throat> okay. But as I said just now, if the student should be able to do something, for example, building up a certain model, and the exam is in a written paper, pen, and uh, pencil, then this assessment of writing up is not suitable because it does not enable lecturers to assess the actual performance of the student. So, in another word, <clears throat> this alternative assessment is used to determine what students can and cannot do rather than what they know or do not know. So, <clears throat> through this alternative assessment, they display what they are able to do and they can display their proficiency, whether they can do it <clears throat> smoothly or they, they, are not, they are unable to do it, uh, you can say that uh, their skill is a bit low. <clears throat> when you do pen and paper, <clears throat> you can only know that, okay, they know that knowledge, but whether they can do that, the knowledge that they learn, <clears throat> that one cannot be assessed through the pen and paper. Now, so, because of that, it is a process-oriented type of assessment. And now, this is the thing that uh, I would like to use this to answer in one of the questions. Can alternative assessment uh, develop learning or assist in the student learning? Yes, because when you create a task, you are not assessing the output, but you're assessing the process of the student doing that task. I give an example just now. If your learning outcome focus on teamwork, 
which I give to you this one example, the real example. There's a lecturer who assess teamwork, giving the correct task, but evaluating the wrong material. <clears throat> they evaluate the end product, which is the report. When you evaluate the report to reflect teamwork, the report does not reflect the ability of the student teamwork skills. Okay, so when you generate the task, the one that you are assessing is the process of the student doing that task. For example, do they discuss? Do they delegate the task to the members? Do they appoint leaders? Okay, how do they respect their members' opinion? Okay, these are the criteria that you have listed down that you want to see the student's ability to have that teamwork skills. So, like in the case that I give an example, if you are giving a task and you are evaluating the report and the rubric for the report is based on the content, that means, number one, you are assessing the output only. And number two, you're assessing the content of the report, which you are, un you are unable to see the teamwork skills among the students. Okay. The next thing is, a process-oriented means that when you give a task, we will provide them with rubrics. So the student needs to know how they are going to be assessed. By looking at the rubric, they can prepare themselves according to the rubric so that they are able to show to us that, okay, these are the things that we are able to do. So understanding about the things that they are required to do will allow the process of learning to happen among the students. Now, don't get confused by, some might be saying that, if we give rubrics, then we just spoon feed them. No. <clears throat> spoon feed through rubric is in the case where your rubric is not a good rubric. For example, like uh, some of the, I can say some of the not suitable rubric is where you put in number of reference, 20. So, as long as I get 20 reference, then I get full mark. So that is not a suitable rubric that allows the student to learn and also to display. A good rubric can be, for example, in a reference. Um, relevant reference that is related to the uh, concept uh, and also uh, current uh, reference. So having that one, it allows them to determine whether the reference that they have is suitable. And this is where discussion among their peers takes place compared to the rubric that I said, five marks having 20 listed reference, four marks having 15 listed reference. So this is I can say, in my opinion also, it's just part of like you're spoon feeding them to make sure that, okay, these are the checklists that I need to fulfill. But the learning doesn't happen because as long as I have 20 reference, enough, I can get full mark. So <clears throat> the importance of developing proper rubrics will allow them to learn by doing the task that you give. So that is why alternative assessment is a process-oriented type of assessment. Different compared to pen and paper. When we say that, okay, we are going to have exam in two weeks' time. These are the topics that we are going to, uh, will be asked. What will the student do? They go back, just study and try to memorize. Okay, so the strategy is on memorizing and how to answer. But when you do an alternative assessment, 
rather than having a pen and paper, you ask them to present a video of what they understand or writing up a, a certain topic okay, based on what they understand, then the process of thinking, how am I going to write this? What are the approach? Okay, what are the content? How do I break the content? So the thinking skills takes place. right? And this is where they learn. Compared to when you wanted to do a written exam, all they need to do is how to strategize to get full mark, uh, how many numbers of points that I need to get. And the memorization of the points so that I don't left out any points when I answered the question. Another one, when you do multiple choice, these are the selected things. So which one that should be the right answer? So it didn't allow flexibility for them to display according to their ability. <clears throat> All right? So <clears throat> in other words, Alternative assessment is all sorts of assessment that are used to measure students' ability and proficiency. So in this case, it can be a normal method like presentation, uh, doing videos, okay, lab tests, that if you notice, it has also been done during your student years, 10, 10 20, 30 years, even 40 years ago for those who are senior lecturers. Okay? As long as the assessment measures student ability and proficiency on certain skill set, okay, then that is what alternative assessment is all about. So all sorts of assessment that are used to measure students' ability and proficiency in performing complex tasks that are related to the intended learning outcome. <clears throat> so if they are need to present, you ask them to present. When they, uh, they need to give an explanation, your assessment will allow them to have the chance to explain. It may not be in written, it can be in videos, interviews, or you can do a seminar in which they organize a seminar and they explain to the participant who came to the seminar. So, and you can see the ability to do all the skill set, right? So <clears throat> uh, alternative assessment allows the student to demonstrate the ability okay, for each skill set that is intended in the learning outcome. Second, perform meaningful tasks. That means meaningful task is task that is related to the real world situation. So let us go back to how we work. We don't work through answering exam papers. We work through collaboration. We work through discussion. We work through uh, preparing materials. Okay, so. When the assessment allows them to perform tasks that is related to what they are going to do when they graduate, right? Handling seminars, making presentation, uh, working as a team, leading a team, and through that task, that is where the meaning of perform meaningful task. If they just answered in a pen and paper, okay, explain how you are going to do this. So the task is not meaningful because they just write. But if, for example, they need to explain to people, they need to prepare a poster, these are the tasks that they will do even after they graduate. right? So this is what, this is what means by perform meaningful tasks. And the third one is receive feedback by a qualified person. So when you do written exam, you don't receive feedback immediately because you need to, they need to keep quiet, just think and answer. But when you give them a task, 
within a certain period or duration, then you can monitor to see the understanding, to see the skills, how do they develop the skills, and you can give direct feedback regarding to how they perform. And not only that, when you have a rubric, they can also know through the marks that they get which part of the skills that they are still lacking and need improvement. So, in contrast between alternative assessment and conventional, so you can see that in alternative, it depends on direct measures of the skill set that you want. Compared to conventional pen and paper, so it depends on the learning proxy measures. Through exam, you know that they know. Okay, uh, through that that uh, written exam, but it does not indicate whether they attain the skill set. And conventional, of course, encourage memorization, but alternative uh, assessment encourage divergent thinking in order for them to display the skills that they need to portray, then looking back at their strength, they can choose how should they perform the skill set, right? So it is not a one track. It also allows different students to portray according to their different ability. And alternative assessment aims to enhance the development of meaningful skills through that task that you give, through the rubric that uh, you show to them. So that is where learning happens, right? And it also allows interactive performance because they are not sitting quietly answering, but during the task, they can interact with their peers, they can interact with you, okay? And the other one is, by having this task, it fosters intrinsic motivation because they know what they need to display, how the task will be conducted. So they will develop the inner side of their motivation that I need to perform this, I need to display this, okay? To show that I'm able to acquire the skill set that I'm supposed to acquire. And in doing alternative assessment, as I said just now, it can be various. It can also still be written, like I give, for example, the writing of Jawi, because it depends on the learning outcome that you have. So it depends on the learning outcome. So if pen and paper is still relevant, then pen and paper it is. But if there are other tasks that you can give that allows them to portray their skill, then that is the method that you can do. So to uh, summarize for this, uh, the first part before we take a break, okay, the advantages of alternative assessment is they provide means of assessing skills, okay, which pen and paper cannot assess that particular skill. And it is more realistic. Okay? The student will need to do a simulated assessment or a real-world situation. What does it mean by simulated and real-world experience? Take, for example, communication skills. Like in situation two, where the student needs to explain through oral presentation. When you set a duration in the class in which the student needs to present, that is in a simulated environment. They still perform, you can still see them, but it is in a simulated environment. But if you say that we are going to do a seminar, we are going to invite industry, we are going to invite lecturers from other faculties, this is a proper seminar, organized, a program, 
and they need to present that is in a real world situation. So this is what it is meant by providing a more realistic setting. You can do it in the actual or you can do it in, in, in a simulated setting. Okay, And they focus on student performance and the quality of work, not on the student's knowledge. And by having this alternative assessment, it's easy for us to align to the intended learning outcome. If you only do pen and paper for all your learning outcome, you are unable to constructively align the assessment to the learning outcome as well as to address the skill set that you want to assess. Now, bear in mind, in order to conduct this, the process can be costly, like handling seminars and all that. Uh, when you want to perform lab work or lab exam, you need to provide certain apparatus, certain uh, call it, uh, equipment. So it took effort because it is not a one, one hour process. It may take maybe one day or two day process or two weeks, uh, as well as facilities and some funds. So <clears throat> the characteristic of alternative assessment, uh, they are characteristic. How do I know that my assessment is, can be considered as alternative assessment? Number one is you're assessing the student performance, okay? not the knowledge. Some lecturers may say that written exam, the student memorize and put, there is also student performance. So why can't we call it an alternative assessment since the written exam is also displaying student performance? Written exam only displays student performance in terms of their ability to know or memorize. If you look into the learning outcome, I don't know whether you have a learning outcome. At the end of the course, students should be able to memorize the content of the learning, right? No. If your learning outcome is like that, then written exam is the best because it allows the student to portray how they memorize the content. But I'm pretty sure and confidently there is no learning outcome that says at the end of the course, students should be able to memorize. Unless if, I don't know, because IIUM also have a religious program. Uh, Hatam Quran. So Hatam Quran, you need to memorize and you need to, when people ask you, okay, uh, please recite Surah al mulk uh, from uh, verse number one to number 10. So of course you need to memorize and you need to see, you need to recite. So depends on the learning outcome. Okay, number two, higher level of thinking. What does it mean by higher level of thinking? Must the alternative assessment must be conducted at a cognitive level, level three, four, five, six? Okay, but what about skill sets for psychomotor and effective? <clears throat> now, higher level of thinking means that when you provide the task, the task does not only allows the student, okay, we're going to have exam. So the thing is, I just study, memorize, and prepare, practice to answer. Take, for example, if you want to conduct a seminar and they need to present in front of the audience, so higher level of thinking means that it's not just a simple presentation. They need to think how to prepare the presentation, what type of material that they need to have, um, the medium that they want to, uh, they want to use, okay? uh, the language and everything. Even if you prepare a task for teamwork, so they need to think of how to, to communicate how to delegate, all right? So it is not just merely taking the notes and memorize. This is what higher level thinking means, okay? One. Second higher level of thinking is 
where the assessment is focusing on the higher thinking order. For example, in cognitive, you are addressing cognitive level three application or cognitive level four analysis or evaluation or level six synthesis. So these are the two things that refers to higher level of thinking. Now, even though your course is only assessing cognitive level two, actually alternative assessment can still be done. Students need to portray their understanding right? uh, by <clears throat> ability to explain. At the end of the course, students should be able to explain certain concepts. <clears throat> Explanation must not solely be done through exam. You can ask them to do videos. <clears throat> you can do interview. Or you can ask them to prepare a poster, a pamphlet, and see how much they are able to explain that particular concept. So this is what is meant by, it does not mean that it must be conducted at level three, four, five, six. It can also be conducted at level, cognitive level two. Because look back at the term, anything that allows the student to portray their ability okay, towards the intended learning outcome and refers to real world situation. You can still conduct alternative assessment for that level. Okay, and <clears throat> three and four, I have uh, deliberated this thing several times. Meaningful instruction, real world application, and it allows human judgment in scoring. Okay, what does it mean, human judgment? <clears throat> Sometimes when you do multiple choice, you just put inside the machine. So those who answered, if the answer is A, and those who answered A is correct. Those who answered B is incorrect. But when you do rubric, then you can see uh, based on the scale, based on the ability, and that is what is meant by human judgment. All right, <clears throat> uh, I open to any question uh, before we take a five minutes break uh, to go to into the next topic. So please, if you have any question, uh, I will welcome to, to take the question. If there are no questions at the moment, uh, maybe we'll take a five minutes break, uh, Dr. Wirawani. Sure, sure, sure. Inshallah. Uh, so we meet back, let's say, at 10.10. Uh, .10. Okay. Okay. Okay, then. In the meantime, if you have any question, you can just put it in the jam board or you can just put it in the chat. Then uh, we'll, we'll try to answer before we go to uh, the second part. All right? Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I have provided in the chat the ebook for the KPT Alternative Assessment Handbook and also the uh, holistic learning that I mentioned. So <clears throat> participants can uh, get this from the chat that I have uh, provided. So. Let us continue. In the meantime, let me check if there is any other uh, question. Okay. 
Well, before we continue, so far, uh, is everybody okay? Uh, or there's still uh, things that you don't understand uh, through my explanation? Okay. I will send again. There's some just enter. Just uh, give me a few minutes. Let me copy back and uh, put this. Okay, this is the handbook, and this is. All right. <clears throat> Now, in part number two, let us look at the <clears throat> type of alternative assessment. Okay, what are the alternative assessment? So in the first part, you can see that alternative assessment is any type of assessment that you can do that allows the student to portray their proficiency in the certain skill sets that is inside the intended learning outcome. And uh, what I'm trying to make clear to participants is alternative assessment is not a new thing okay even though the name is a new within this uh, five years back but it's not new it's been here for the, uh, 10 20 years ago even the first book on alternative assessment if i'm not mistaken was published around uh, 1969 or 1980s uh, like that and from the, the thing that I gave just now, you can see that there are some that we can see it is conventional, but that is the assessment that you assess to see the student performance, a lab test, presentation. So things that are not, that is considered normal, but these are the things that enables you to assess the student performance. Now, there are two major types of alternative assessment. Since we are talking about real world situation. So one of them is the authentic assessment. Authent authentic refers to the form of assessment where they carry out real world application. So just now, when you ask them to present, you conduct a seminar, a program in which you invite somebody else to come. Okay. Uh, some of my colleagues have used this. They ask the student to prepare a poster and they organize a seminar, but it is an internal seminar where they invite only the faculty members, students, lecturers inside that faculty. So it can be like that. These are what we call as authentic assessment. If, for example, in your course, like engineering, they are asked to develop a certain model okay, or certain product, and they develop that product, that is what we call as real-world situation, okay, in which they can see how the knowledge can be applied. Okay. Uh, another thing is, normally this type of assessment will be assessed using a rubric. Now, performance base is anything that you do that is not in a real situation form, okay, but still it enables educators to assess student performance. Okay, I give the, the simplest example like the presentation just now. When you conduct a program, a seminar, where you have invited uh, participants from the faculty or outside the faculty, 
that means an actual program. So that is authentic, in which they need to perform, they need to present to the real audience. Some of them where they conduct program to the community and they present to the community. So this is real world application. But when you ask them to make a presentation in the class, okay, you set a certain duration. Uh, next week, uh, we are going to have a presentation okay, about this topic. Uh, it will be two hours. Each student needs to present about 15 minutes. Then they present in the class. So in this type where it is not in a real world situation, these are what we call as performance-based assessment. And in this case, they need to use their higher order thinking skills to create a product or complete a task. How do I prepare this? How do I arrange? Okay. Uh, how do I strategize on this? And the key thing is that it is not as simple as in a written where I just take my notes, start to memorize, even though it looks like a strategy, but it's just focusing on how I can keep the knowledge in my head so that I'm able to let it out when I answer the exam. Right. <clears throat> And performance-based is not just about uh, looking at the output of the final product, but you are looking at the whole process. I'm repeating this because I noticed that these are some of the mistakes that are being done by uh, a few lecturers when they, when they try to assess through task or project. Okay. Leadership is one example. The same thing, when the, I'm trying to assist some uh, lecturers, they give a task, uh, each student will have a chance to lead the, the group, but the output that is being evaluated is the final report. Okay. So when you evaluate final report, you don't evaluate the leadership. Because leadership is, you are trying to see in the rubric, how do delegate, how do the leader delegate the task? How do the leader communicate the information to the members? Uh, how do the leader monitor the progress? Okay, And how do the leader create a harmonious environment among the members? So this is actually what you are trying to assess when you say, I'm assessing leadership skill. But along the way, some of the lecturers, when they evaluate, I'm evaluating the final part that is the report. And again, the rubric is on the content. Okay, the content is relevant. The content is sufficient, written in a proper manner. So when you do this, you get marks. You give marks to the student. These are your leadership skills. But actually, these are your report writing skills. Okay, so this is where it requires a more subjective judgment. And because of that, you need to create a proper rubric and assess the proper criteria. Okay, we will go into that when we, when we go to the third section. Now, there are several categories in alternative assessment. So you have group-based assessment, okay, where the student works in group to complete a specific task. Suitable if you are trying to uh, assess a teamwork, a leadership, right? as well as if you want to look into ethics, okay, and you give them a certain period of time. Another one is portfolio-based, where they create a portfolio to display the progress of their learning. In the portfolio-based assessment, there is a certain task that they need to do. And after finishing doing the task, they also need to do a reflection. So portfolio-based will allow you to track how the student progress and also 
it also allows the student to display their ability. And the thing again that I would like to answer back, how does alternative assessment provide learning? Now, when you provide like portfolio-based assessment, this is not a one-time chance for the student to prepare the report. In that task, they will allow to do several attempts to display their best ability. Take, for example, in one task, they need to prepare a video okay, in which they present. They make a screencast uh, or they just take a video and explain. Now, how does this thing allow them to increase their skills and also learning? When they take their first take, they will try to reflect back. Is this a good presentation? They may ask their peers, how do you think my presentation? Then maybe the student, the, the peers will say that you need to improve on this. You are talking too fast. Or, we couldn't understand because there are some pronunciation. Then they need to, they will repeat again. So these are what we call as intrinsic motivation. Okay, I need to improve. I need to do my best. I have the chance to display the best of me. So they try to make and to repeat and make another recording and the process of trying to improve themselves this is where learning happens this is where they understand what does a good presentation is and they can self assess and they can also ask their members to assess and along the way the learning happens and they acquired that particular skill set so uh, group-based, portfolio-based assessment, uh, which is inside the alternative assessment, this is how it allows the student to improve on their skills and as well as learn. Now, another one is, <clears throat> again, performance-based. Why does this thing put, put inside? Performance-based in this thing is, re is related to the any task that you do that you want to see they, they, how they perform. For example, if let's say at the end of the course, they are able to <clears throat> develop a model. So now when you give a task, you try to see whether they can develop that model. Uh, in my case, last time, <clears throat> when we conduct one of my colleagues, which I also shared in the uh, alternative assessment handbook, they need to design a trap to catch a fish. Okay? And the task is they need to design and develop the trap and they need to test the trap to see whether the trap that they design enables the fish to be caught. So these are real-world applications to see the ability in the intended learning outcome, students should be able to design a fishing gear device to catch a fish. So <clears throat> it's not being used in a written uh, pen and paper. It is, it is not being done in a simulated environment in which they try to prepare a small scale model. Now they need to prepare a real model. So these are what we call as performance-based. Lab work, for example. And certain tasks, I still remember uh, in one of the English communication exam, one lecturer shared in the webinar. They asked the student to go to a restaurant, record how they make an order to the, uh, to the personnel to order the food. So real situation, real task, and, and in, uh, in this, uh, sorry, in this case, you can see how they perform, but that uh, is under the authentic. Uh, another performance base is where, like I said just now, you ask the student to make a presentation in the classroom. <clears throat> okay. 
technology-based assessment where you use technology. Okay, students use certain apps. Uh, this is what I meant by TikTok. Just now, you, uh, there's one uh, participant who asked, how can we leverage alternative assessment to this new uh, Gen, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, who are more prone to this uh, social media? Well, you know that in certain cases where they need to present, you can ask them to present using TikTok. Make a TikTok and explain about certain things. Uh, this is what we call as technology-based assessment, right? And uh, for digital skills, for example, or teamwork, you can also use technology like uh, just now, uh, Google Jamboard or uh, Google uh, Docs or Google Sheet, where they collaborate to create a content and we try to see how they are able to work together. Now, another one is peer and self-assessment. Okay, uh, This is where in certain tasks, they self-evaluate themselves. Okay, And in teamwork, for example, you can ask their peers to evaluate them. Now, in, in this kind of thing, some might ask, so how is the portion of the marks that we should give? Okay, should we allow higher portion of marks to their peers because they are the ones who work nearly 100% together with the members? Well, in this case, as we all know, you can allow a certain percentage to cater for the peer assessment. Maybe out of the 100%, 30% for peer assessment, but 70% by you. Okay, and this is the one that allows flexibility and also again it provides the it improves the learning process because they know that they are going to be assessed by their peers so in my experience uh, the risk on in which the student will have a consensus okay let us give everybody 10 marks seldom happens to a proper instruction and proper explanation. And again, when you explain regarding the ethics and integrity, inshallah, the risk of having this kind of biasness is very minimum. Okay, so enough for my explanation. So let us do activity number three. Now, what is your alternative assessment? Since uh, we have gone through understanding alternative assessment, and you can see that there are several types of alternative assessment. Now, let us see how much you, you understand. And uh, maybe I'm sure that there are assessment that you have been done in your classroom and that is already in the alternative assessment category. So <clears throat> there is another Google Jamboard, which I will share uh, for those of you. You can screenshot this and uh, just type this in your computer. Uh, in the meantime, I will give you this in the um, chat. Let me stop sharing this. Okay, so in this activity number three, actually, so 
So please share with me uh, what are the assessment that you see that, okay, this is alternative assessment that you have used in the course and uh, determine which category, either performance-based or authentic assessment. So this is, I give an example how you write. If you have, for example, oral presentation and then put in the bracket performance base. Okay, we have one doing on portfolio, all right? That is great. See, <clears throat> I know that some of you have already used alternative, applied alternative assessment for your course. Okay, what about others? Is there anybody who conducted a presentation or a lab uh, exam? Okay, we give about two to three minutes uh, for participants to share. Okay, we have one doing on the lab test. Assessing students in handling apparatus in the lab. Okay, example like the burette, yes. That is great. So lab test is actually what we call as performance-based uh, assessment in alternative assessment. Role play, oh, that's great. Role play for patient care. Yes, where it allows the student to display the ability. How do they conduct uh, patient care, right? Rather than having them to write how to, to conduct certain patient care, in the hospital and they wrote it down in the uh, paper or they write an assignment. Here you can really see whether they are able to display the proficiency of that particular skill. Problem-based learning, okay? Where they need to have critical thinking, right? Uh, how to solve certain problems, how to identify certain problems to cater for one of the intended learning outcome, the cognitive skill in the MQA 2.0. If uh, the, 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 the first slide is full, you can continue on the second slide. Okay, I also prepared here. And also on the third slide, if the, the first slide is already full. Okay, some of them do simulation. Uh, that means it's a performance base. Okay, at the end of the call of the group assignment, students need to give comments on their teammates' performance, contribution to the work. So I assume that this is on teamwork skills, right? Uh, videos. All right. Now, video is also part of alternative assessment where you can really see the skills uh, that they, are, they, they need to do. Videos can, can be in the form of the, you want to assess the communication skills and video can also be to assess what they are able to do. For example, how to conduct certain experiment procedures then they video the method to display their ability to conduct that process. Yes. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we can see that uh, 
some of the participants already conduct alternative assessment in their course. Now, for those of you who hasn't developed or conduct alternative assessment, now in the third part, we will focus on the step-by-step -step in developing your alternative assessment. Let me check whether they have any. Ah, group work. Completing a computer model, performance-based. All right, correct. Now, in which part where you can say uh, authentic assessment? If you ask the student to complete a computer model. Now, take for example, if you collaborate with a company and the company can assess the students and now the student need to prepare a computer model for that company. That means it is in a real situation, then that is authentic assessment. If, for example, they need to complete a model uh, within the boundaries of the universities, for example, in the lab, okay, in the computer lab, uh, that is performance-based. That means in a simulated, some may have a role play. Okay, I know, I give you an example in uh, some lecturers in other universities, they have a role play. Uh, the student need to act as a law firm and several lecturers act as a company. So in a simulated environment in which the student needs to give advice, the student needs to provide some uh, suggestions. So in this case, this is called performance-based. But if the student needs to communicate with industry in a real-world uh, situation, and then that is called authentic. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, for those of you who still want to share, please put in inside this uh, Jamboard. Now let us go. In the meantime, I share back another slide. Okay. <clears throat> These are some of the examples that I would like to share uh, regarding alternative assessment. In uh, UMT, I uh, collect several <clears throat> activities from my colleague. Now, we have in one course in marine biology, in which uh, students who are taking up this course need to organize an exhibition. So in order to organize this exhibition, they need to display the model. They need to display the, the uh, they need to provide information in the form of posters and videos, right? So it's a group project. And this exhibition is attended by the Warga University, by the university community inside UMT. So it is a actual exhibition. It's not a simulated. And you can see the students' motivation in trying to do their best to display their booth, right? And uh, you can also use uh, kits, okay? Uh, this is, uh, I'll show to you the example. I'm using my teaching kits, okay? I'm teaching fishery science in which they learn about fish species and their taxonomy in part of the work. So in order to assess teamwork, uh, they are given a duration and they have several tasks that they need to do in order to portray their teamwork ability. Now, this is part of the activities in which I use my teaching kids. Okay, It will take them about two hours to work together as a team to assemble a taxonomic classification regarding the species that is inside the card. So as you can see, this is in a performance-based, in a simulated environment. 
So you can uh, be creative in developing your alternative assessment as long as the assessment allows you to see the student's proficiency or ability for the intended learning outcome. Now, and some, another example of alternative assessment where the student presenting their product, the innovation, this is where they learn about uh, food production, okay, uh, related to fish resources, and they need to cook, okay. But before that, they need to devise the recipe, and after that, panel will test and try to. give comments about the food. So here, it's not about the competition of which dish is the best, but what they need to explain is what are the process that they use to prepare the food? Because this is a course on food processing. So here, they will, they will say that they develop this using this method. They use uh, fish paste. Surimi and all that. Uh, this is what the panels will evaluate, apart from a small portion of the marks in terms of the presentation of the food and also the taste of the food. Whether they prepare, even though they prepare with the right process, but the output must also come out tasty. Otherwise, there's no point processing a food, but it does not favored by the community. All right. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Dr. Izahan, for the comment. Hope you can understand between this uh, authentic uh, and performance based alternative assessment. Now, another one example of alternative assessment this is about leadership, where in this course, food science course, they need to open up a restaurant. Uh, now this is authentic assessment okay, category where they open up a restaurant and it is open to public. Public will come, order food, and they need to organize, prepare, and run the restaurant. So it is a whole day process uh, to operate the restaurant, but it is a one-week work because they need to plan, they need to prepare the ingredients. Prior to that, they need to prepare the restaurant and the restaurant operates for one day. So you can see here, the supervisor brief the staff and they will be evaluated. Okay, This is where the leadership uh, evaluation being assessed. So you can see now it's not being assessed to report, it's being assessed during the briefing made by the leader. And then the student will open up the criteria, uh, the cafeteria, setting up the store. Uh, in another aspect, this is where teamwork skills are being assessed. Okay, so you can see the student's ability, the student's proficiency to do to display that particular skills that is being required in the intended learning outcome. So not in the pen and paper, pencil, or in an assignment where they need to prepare a, an essay on how to operate a restaurant. Okay, this is one that I mentioned just now where in one of the subjects, they need to develop the fishing gear, right? And they need to assess the efficiency in a real-world situation. Uh, so this is authentic assessment. It's not just developing a model, but a real scale model. And they need to test whether this model works or not. Okay? And as you can see, some of the alternative assessment will take time, consume time, effort, and also equipment and apparatus. Even, that's why uh, compared to, sorry, compared to the normal pen and paper where you can set about two hours and then done. And then you can start marking. But here you need to see how do they operate? 
And then you need to assess the model, whether the model is being developed according to the fundamental concepts of the uh, fishing gears, so on and so forth. All right. So before we take another 10 minutes break, because after this, we are going into developing alternative exam. I want to show you this example. Okay, hope you can see. <clears throat> um, where is the list? I'm trying to show the list of... Uh, ah, okay. <clears throat> So, apart from what you give, like the lab test, okay, uh, computer model, among the alternative assessment type that you can give is the structured on-demand task, where along the line, you give a certain task in which they need to do it uh, at, the team, at, the, at the particular uh, selection of time. Okay, let me zoom a bit. Oh, okay, make it bigger. All right. Okay. Is it okay now for you? All right. And then, uh, typical performance task that uh, just now you asked them to create a model. It can be a long-term project. It is a one semester project or a three weeks project in which they need to solve a problem using problem-based learning. Okay, So it can be within a short period of time. It can also be within a long period of time. You want them to solve a certain problem or you want to assess teamwork, then you give them about two weeks or three weeks a project in which they need to do. Like seminars, maybe you give them about one month for them to organize that seminar. I remember in one uh, subject yeah, in uh, UITM, in which in Akri, they need to organize a drama and they invite public to watch that drama. So this is to assess the teamwork skills uh, to organize an event. So it can be a long-term project. Portfolio, I've mentioned just now. Okay, a Simulation, where you create a role play, you create a certain environment that mimics the actual situation and they need to conduct. Okay, oral presentation. Uh, and also dramatization, role play. Uh, I still remember one of my colleagues in UKM where they do book court, okay, where they have judge, they have the jury, and they need to conduct one trial that has been given. So each particular people need to display the role okay, for each uh, individual. Experiment. In some project, you give a task for them to identify. I give you one example. Uh, one of my colleagues who is doing right now on uh, biotechnology, fisheries biotechnology. Okay, what she did was after they have conducted five lab exercise on how to extract the DNA, how to do the PCR, how to uh, analyze the sequence of the uh, DNA of the fish and identify what species is that using certain uh, apps and tools, software. Now, they give a task in which they need to do the experiment. So they are given a chunk of uh, fish muscle, a small portion of fish muscle, each group. So what they need to do is they need to extract the DNA uh, conduct the experiment and try to identify what is 
that particular fish species that are they are trying to analyze. So uh, you can do that through experiments and also demonstration. Demonstration that, for example, one of them is drama. Okay, uh, role playing can be one where they need to demonstrate a certain uh, ability based on a situation that you have created. All right. But again, uh, before we go to the next one, the next one is going to be a bit heavy, to me, uh, I think. So that's why we take a break about 10 minutes. Before we start, I just want to highlight, just now we are looking into alternative assessment. But prior to alternative assessment, where you want to see the student's ability or proficiency on certain skill set, we must remember that not only assessing them is crucial, but preparing them to acquire that skill set is also important. So there are also some situations where lecturers are too focused on how to assess, but they forget got about how to develop the skill set during the teaching and learning activities. So that's why in this uh, handbook by KPT, uh, some of the authors trying to emphasize that the constructive alignment must be well aligned. So if you are trying to develop a certain skill set that you are trying to assess, you need to make sure to have the proper, suitable learning activities where they are able to practice and develop that particular skill before they are being assessed. So this is what we are going to go through in this, uh, the, the next chapter, chapter number three, in developing your alternative assessment. Okay, let me share back this. So we're going to take a 10 minutes break and then uh, we'll take about uh, one hour to go step by step in developing this. So these, there are steps in how to develop your alternative assessment. So we'll go one by one. Uh, in the meantime, while taking a break, I will provide with you with a template. Now that template, uh, I shared through a link. Once you click that link, don't be afraid because you will not get the file, but you will be asked to make a copy. So this is not uh, a scam or what. It's not a virus. So just make a copy and save as your uh, own personal file. All right. Okay. So uh, before we take a break, is there any question that you want to ask? Please do so. While I look back at this... Uh... Okay, I see one, uh, it's not a question, but I just want to, to share another uh, comment or response by a participant. Entrepreneurship, yes. Thank you for highlighting this because I also uh, forgot to explain about entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship simulation. They develop a product based on a team and then they prepare a promotion video, yes. Uh, this is uh, in a simulated environment, performance-based. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, in uh, Unimas. Okay. Uh, the, the lecturer that won first place in transformative category, teaching category uh, in Acre, in which she did an entrepreneurship uh, course in which they need to create a product or you can they can use existing product and they need to do marketing online marketing okay there are several steps they need to follow and and they need to sell the product 
So that is a real world situation. Create, display, okay, uh, do some marketing. And uh, on top of that, why I would like to share this uh, when one of the participants highlight about entrepreneurship. Well, you can see, uh, trying to answer again regarding to how alternative assessment promotes learning. When these students do that, uh, that particular, uh, the lecturer mentioned that most of the students attain profit between 500 to 15,000 ringgit. Okay, through that course. So that means they not only learn about how to do digital marketing in that particular course for entrepreneurship, but they also learn how to sell in the real world environment and gain money. Okay, so and the output from this assessment and from this activity, the their center for entrepreneurship assists some of the students who still want to conduct the entrepreneurship program, facilitate them so that they can still continue to do that throughout their journey, taking the degree. So you can see how this alternative assessment can also spark and inspire other activities and assist students to become job creators, okay? Uh, and not only job seekers by having this type of skill set. So uh, that, that is the thing. So that's why I said, if you are creative enough, don't just uh, enclose within the boundary of your classroom. But this is not a must. I say, don't force yourself and be stressed out trying to be innovative. Focus on developing a proper alternative assessment, then start to progress. And if the alternative assessment can be very beneficial and targeting two to three other impact, and alhamdulillah. But if your alternative assessment enables you to really assess the student ability, it's also alhamdulillah because that is the initial intention. All right. So we'll take a break for 10 minutes. Now it's already 11. So can we see back about 11.10, Dr. Wira? Sure, sure. Okay. In the meantime, I will share uh, the, the link of the file so that the participants can also uh, make a copy before we start. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Hope everybody <clears throat> have some uh, feeling refreshed uh, after this uh, uh, 10 minutes break and uh, we'll continue with our third uh, part, the last part of this uh, webinar come workshop, uh, developing your alternative assessment. So before we go here, looking at the steps. Uh, I would like just to take a few minutes to recap what we have uh, gained or what we have covered starting from the earliest part. So the first thing is number one, you can see alternative assessment is the any form of assessment that has been done in which you are able to assess students' ability and proficiency of the certain skill set based on the intended learning outcome. And it also allows the student to display what they are able to do and not only what they are able to know. And based on that, what I'm trying to highlight is there are some methods in which we feel that that is normal, but that is alternative assessment. Things normal in the sense that it has been done for a long time ago, but that is the assessment where you are able to see how the student perform 
in relation to the skill set that is being required. So as long as that thing is related, even though it is con uh, considered as normal or being done a long time ago, it is still alternative assessment. So anything that is outside from the pen and paper, but again, related to pen and paper, as I've shown to you, it relates back to the learning outcome. Can pen and paper still be relevant? Of course. Take, for example, if you ask them or you create an open book test to see their ability for lifelong learning, how do they gather information? So you ask them to do an open book test. It looks like a pen and paper where they need to prepare a report. But as I said just now, look back at the intended learning outcome. So open book test, even though it looks like a pen and paper, is still an alternative assessment in relation to the intended learning outcome, which caters for a certain skill sets. I've shown to you just now, the student needs to able to write uh, Bahasa Jawi or Chinese language. So pen and paper is still relevant for that particular purpose, even though there are other means of assessment. For, for example, they prepare a poster, they prepare a pamphlet, okay? and in which inside there, they can portray their ability. Or some uh, in authentic assessment, uh, of alternative but in authentic form, you ask them to open up a booth in one of the uh, what's that uh, seminar or uh, we call it uh, what it calls it in uh, forgot already uh, in a certain exhibition right, where you have convocation and you have this pesta convo, so they open up a booth and they say that okay uh, we are selling this uh, writing calligraphy. Uh, Bahasa Jawi. So that can be parts of alternative assessment for the student to display their ability to write that particular language. Right? Uh, so uh, you can do it in that particular form or you can also do it in a pen and paper because the intended learning outcome is such a way that that pen and paper allows you to see how they perform. <clears throat> Okay, uh, the third, uh, another third thing that I would like to highlight is in alternative assessment, there are two major uh, categories. That is authentic in which the assessment is based on real world situation. Uh, the one that I shared to you, the entrepreneurship, the fishing gears, okay? uh, having seminars, organizing seminar, exhibition, in which you invite outside people or community to attend. So that is authentic assessment. And there are also where you do it in a simulated environment. Uh, you ask the student to present in the classroom. <clears throat> you ask them to develop a model like engineering. Uh, I'm sure it's difficult for you if they are able to, to develop certain things and you ask them through an alternative assessment method where they need to build a proper bridge, a real bridge, I don't think they can settle it within one semester. But you ask them to develop a model, uh, a, a simulated model. So that is what we call performance-based. They perform a certain experiment. Okay, uh, That is considered as performance-based. So you have authentic assessment, where it relates to the real world situation, and you have also the performance space where they are able to display their skill set, but in a simulated environment. Role play is another example. Okay, so now how are you going to develop an alternative assessment? Now, there are five major steps 
number one, in order for you to develop, you need to identify what is your learning outcome. What are the skill sets that the student should display their proficiency? Okay. And two, when you have determined that these are the skill sets that they need to display, then you try to choose what type of alternative assessment that you want to do, whether you are trying to do authentic or performance-based. And inside there, are you trying to do a certain task, role play? Is it an open book test, a report writing, exhibition, a drama, a seminar? And then you develop a rubric to assess that particular skill set. And along the way, during the given time, that is where you monitor and you provide feedback to the student regarding their progress. And this is where the student will do the continuous quality improvement. Now, when I mentioned this, there are some lecturers who misunderstood that does it mean that we give feedback until they are able to score A? Then only we stop. Must alternative assessment continue and continuous quality improvement in such a way that everybody must get an A for the test? No. Continuous quality improvement is in which when the student try make an effort to improve themselves based on the given rubric, this is where or what is meant by continuous quality improvement. Okay? And they need to do that within a period of time. If let's say you say that the duration of the task is three weeks. So this is the duration in which they are given the time to improve, to portray their best before being assessed. So you are not expanding, oh, within three weeks, we see that they are unable to do. Let us expand, extend another two weeks. Or let us extend until the end of semester. Now, that is not the proper way. Within a certain period of time, how the improvement occurs. So in doing this, <clears throat> let us recap back about the constructive alignment. Just now and today, we are focusing on alternative assessment. But we need to realize that when we start to deliver our course, it is tailored to what are the learning outcomes that is intended. From there, we design the teaching method that meets the learning outcome. What I mean by that? Take, for example, if one of your learning outcome caters for cognitive and the cognitive is level cognitive C4, <clears throat> that is analysis. The students are able to break down the components of the info, analyze and give their justification. And the assessment method in which you give them a problem-based learning. But what happened if your delivery for that particular learning outcome, the teaching and learning method, is only up until you give them lectures, you ask them to memorize things. So does that teaching delivery allows them to enhance the ability to analyze Okay, up to the level of C4. For sure, it does not meet that level. So your teaching method must also allow them to practice and develop that particular skill. But when I mention to this, there are also some lecturers say that if we train them up until there and then we do the assessment, isn't that we are just spoon feeding them? Or you need to do, you need, you will be assessed like this. So this is how we're going to teach you. 
That means you give them a task in which they need to solve problems, but now you give them every day in the teaching and learning activities how to solve problems, how to solve problems, then they just muntahkan uh, balik the, the skill? No. And this is where the creativity of the lecturer comes in place. This is not like uh, as, uh, some of the XPM preparation. Practice answering the question, and when that question comes out, just follow the uh, answer. It's not that way. So you need to devise the development based on your teaching and learning activities so that your teaching and learning activities allow them to develop step by step how to analyze things. Then your assessment can be in a different form in which they need to apply all those ability to solve that problem. And remember, even though we are not using MQA 1.0 anymore, but just to recap, if you remember five years ago before MQA 2.0 comes in, there is a mapping. Right? For example, knowledge, a teaching and learning strategy, and assessment strategy, the guidelines that has been given, uh, problem solving and scientific skills, uh, teaching and learning strategy, case study, project, tutorial, group work. These are the teaching and learning strategy. If you notice, it's not anymore lecture or tutorial because it's not uh, relevant and suitable to develop students to have the problem solving skills. So in your teaching, you must have some activities like case study or project or tutorial. And assessment strategy can be in presentation or essay form. Okay, same for as for others. So for MQA 2.0, again, some of them may be similar where for cognitive skills, the ability to solve problems, your teaching and delivery must also be having some, for example, uh, projects or case study to train them to have that ability before you assess them. And must remember this. Uh, I don't know about IIUM, but in, uh, for UMT, when we put in our learning outcome, at the end, we must put in the bracket uh, C4, PLO2. That means this learning outcome is related, focusing on cognitive level four. Second learning outcome is on practical level three, P3. And the third one, for example, is a learning outcome that focuses on teamwork. And in the bracket, we put there, a3, that means up to the level of valuing. So uh, is IIUM also having that particular format of writing the uh, learning outcome? So if you have that particular format, then you need to understand what are the level, what does, what, what does that particular level mean? What does C2, C3, C4 means? Otherwise, how are you going to devise teaching and learning method that can allow the student to achieve that particular level? Same as Psychomoto, we have P1 until P7. There are some courses that focuses up to P4. And there are some courses that up only until P2. So we need to understand what does it mean by P3, P4? And what type of proficiency that they should display when we talk about level P4 or level P3? Okay. And don't be surprised, there are still a small number of lecturers who still don't understand the meaning of this level. And what are the skill set that need, need to 
be proficient at when we talk about certain levels. Now, if you don't have a clear understanding about this, then you will be having problems of designing a proper teaching and learning activities that can develop them to acquire that particular level. So the same as effective domain. You have A1 until A5. In some courses, you have A3. And in some courses, you have until A4, organization. So you need to understand what does it mean by all this. Okay. So now we are going to go into how to develop your alternative assessment. Now, I have uh, designed here to assist lecturers five steps on how you're going to develop this. And we are going to use the template that I've given to you. Uh, is there any participant who have difficulty getting that template? If you have, please say so. And if you are able to assess the template and make a copy, please respond in the chat so that I know uh, how far you are able to get the uh, template that I've given to you. Okay. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to check back the constructive alignment. So we need to map the teaching and learning delivery assessment and the learning outcome and also the learning domain. Need to identify this first. Thank you very much, Dr. Izahan, for the response. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay. The second one is to identify the learning outcome in detail. That means what is the level? What does it mean by that level? Okay. <clears throat> All right, Dr. Amiruddin, just now I've shared the uh, template. Maybe I put in the link again. This is the template that we are going to use afterwards. Okay. And then, in this identifying learning outcome, determine the skills, the, uh, the skill set and the domain level, and what is the meaning of this domain. Okay, and initially, once you have identified and determined the learning outcome, what you need to do is what type of alternative assessment that I'm going to do, whether I'm going to do a performance based or I'm going to do an authentic assessment. Okay, so just determine that. Either you're going to do performance-based assessment or authentic assessment. All right. So in this part, identifying the learning outcome where you determine the skill set and domain level. So remember about this. Okay, uh, You have C1 until C6. You have P1 until P7, and you have A1 until A5, right? So these are the things that you need to put in. Okay, so the first step, let us do alternative assessment for my course. Uh, I don't think that we can finish that template uh, to put in all the learning outcome uh, for your course based on your course info. So... In this activity number four, what you need to do is I have provided a table uh, based on the, the link of the file that I shared. So what you need to do is, uh, remember in the first part, I, I uh, request that each participant uh, bring along your course info. So what you need to do is fill up the learning outcome, the learning activity and assessment column and suggest an alternative assessment for the learning outcome. Okay, let me share this to you. Okay, for those of you 
who got access to the template, this is the template that you have. Okay, it is uh, in the Google Doc. So what you need to do is put the course name, your course code, okay, the credit hours, and in for this exercise, because I don't think we can finish up full, filling up all the three learning outcome that you have, just fill up one learning outcome that uh, you have decided that this is the learning outcome that I want to uh, conduct alternative assessment. Either you have already conducted or for those who hasn't conduct any alternative assessment, choose one learning outcome that you think and you would like to pick and do alternative assessment for that learning outcome. Okay, what are the things you are going to fill up? Put in the learning outcome, okay, because uh, if you are already transformed into MQF 2.0, so based on MQF 2.0, what are the cluster of your learning outcome? Does it cater for cluster one? two or cluster three or cluster four or five. And then for that particular learning outcome, what is the learning domain? Is it that learning outcome focus on cognitive or psychomotor or effective? And then the third one, what is the learning domain for that outcome? Example, if your learning outcome addresses cognitive and it addresses cognitive level three, that is application. So you put here C3. And then the next one here, put in the name of that domain level, C3. That means application. And this is a bit to me, might be slight challenging uh, to a few uh, of you, describe the learning domain level. So if the domain level is C3, that is application, so what does it mean by application? Okay. In relation to your course, that means the student has the ability to apply certain formulation in developing so and so. Okay. Some of you might think, hey, this is just a repeat of the linear outcome. No, this one you are giving a more detail. What are the certain skill sets related to application that the student need to display? And number six, what are or is the learning activity that you plan to do or you already conducted, which allows the student to reach that level that you have already mentioned. And here, put up what are or is the assessment activity that you do. And number eight, don't fill up yet because number eight, We'll go until step number four afterwards. Okay. This is the detail of how you conduct your assessment. So for this part, I will give you about five minutes. Okay. Now it's already 11.35. I give about five minutes until 11.40. Please fill up this, the top part. And also in this table, up until number five first okay we'll try to see uh, up until here for those of you who are very fast and you already understand if you can go until level uh, number six please do so but we we'll, let's take about five minutes to fill up until number five for those of you who don't understand or have some uh, confusion please you can whatsapp me you can contact me through the chat, we can communicate through this chat, Zoom chat, or you can straight away contact me, WhatsApp me, and 
we'll try to discuss uh, through WhatsApp. Um, for those of you who didn't get the number, my phone number that I displayed earlier, so I just write inside here. Okay, so this is my phone number, 019-286-7794. If, if you have any inquiries, just uh, uh, contact me and we'll try to solve. So for this webinar, uh, we try to do this approach first. Okay. And for those of you who are doing in Google Doc, uh, you can also share. On the top right-hand corner here, you can select share. Okay, just a demo to you. So you can make it anyone with link. Okay, uh, you can set as viewer. Okay, the reason is, I want you to share with me what you have done so that at least I can give comments and feedback to the task that has been given, right? You can set as editor if you want to share or you can set as a viewer or commenter. Then after that, let's say as a viewer, done. Oh, done. A viewer, anyone with link, you copy the link and you can WhatsApp to me the link so that I can check uh, the task or the things that you did in your work, right? So hope that uh, you can do that so that I can uh, able to assist uh, your process in developing the alternative assessment. Okay.
Okay, for those of you <clears throat> who are doing this, uh, may I know how is uh, you all are progressing? You have any difficulties or you have any confusion? Okay, Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Shahazilia, for the response. Okay, wait. One more minute, 11.45. I'll continue to the next step, right? All right, <clears throat> so the first thing, again, just to recap. Let me, before I continue, thank you very much, Dr. Sahimi. Okay, Dr. Sahimi, if uh, you can uh, adjust the setting eh, so to anyone with link, because I need to assess, I need the permission to, to assess your, your file. And this uh, setting here, if you can change this uh, to anyone with a link, then uh, I might be able to assess your, your file. Okay, let me check again. Uh, okay, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Dr. Sahimi, if uh, you can uh, put in your phone number inside there, then uh, I can uh, communicate with you after this uh, workshop uh, to give my feedback. Right? Thank you very much, eh, Dr. Sahimi. Okay, now let us uh, go to the next step. Okay, <clears throat> the first thing we must make sure that the alignment must be correct. Uh, what is your learning outcome? And what is the level? What type of domain you are talking about? Okay, what type of domain that we are talking about? Are you addressing psychomotor, cognitive or affective? And what type of skill set? Is it teamwork, entrepreneurship, uh, leadership? 
ethics and professionalism, or is it cognitive skill or practical skills? All right. And then determine the learning activities. Once you know the level, what does it mean by that level? Okay. Uh, just to give you an example, when people talk about psychomotor level P3, guided response. So guided response is the starting point of proficiency. That means the student is not highly proficient yet. They are able to conduct the method, the process, the procedure, but still with guidance. That means they cannot just put away all this method and procedure, just do like that uh, with a split of a second or effectively. So they still, like for example, I give an analogy. If you teach the student how to bake a cake, okay, putting flour, eggs, and all that, they still need to have some guidance. They still need to refer. They are able to make the cake, but they are not as proficient compared to People say, okay, you make a chocolate cake. They don't need any uh, procedure. They just go to the kitchen, take this, 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 mix, bake, voila, you got it. So that is considered as level P5, P6. P3 means that they are able to do it, but having some guidance. So there is a starting point of proficiency. So this is what is meant when... Uh, inside the table, I ask you to elaborate. What does it mean by that? So the ability for them to do with some guidance based on a certain structured uh, process work or process flow. Okay. Then, when you understand this, you can determine what type of learning activities that should be able to do. Okay, we're going to have some lab work. We're going to have some task or groups discussion or some practical activities for them to having the ability to conduct that process. So this is what is meant by identifying learning outcome. Not just identifying, okay, my learning outcome is they are able to present orally uh, level communication skill, effective level A3. That's all. So you need to understand what does A3 means and how the students should portray when they are reaching level A3. Then you will start to think of how to train them so that they are able to achieve that level A3. Now, after that, then you start to select your alternative assessment. Just now, are you going to do authentic or you're going to do performance-based? Okay. And the alternative assessment that you will do, okay, now I have said that I'm going to do performance-based and the student will need to do a presentation in the classroom. Okay, There will be a two-hour session. Each student will present 15 minutes. So that means here, Step number three is determine whether you are doing authentic assessment or performance-based. Then after that, what type? Presentation. That's all. Okay. Or group work, problem-based, case study, uh, drama, or role play. Okay. That is what I mean by selecting your alternative assessment. Now, step number four, this is where you start to develop your alternative assessment. This one you provide in detail. What is the duration? What the student needs to do? Okay, student need to prepare a 10 minutes presentation. Uh, what are the topics that they need to cover? What are the elements that need to have inside their presentation? And also you need to determine what are the marking tools, whether you're going to have rubrics, even rubrics you have, uh, holistic rubrics, or you have criterion uh, rubrics, 
or you're going to do checklists or anecdotal notes. Okay, so now for your my alternative assessment activity, if you have suggested, okay, you're going to do oral presentation, then expand your instructional design to conduct that alternative assessment. As I mentioned just now, the duration, what are the things the student need to do? Okay. Do they need to perform a certain experiment? If they need to perform certain experiment, what type of experiments do they need to do? And how are they going to present that experiment? So these are the things that you need to fill up. Okay, where do you need to fill up in this activity? You need to fill up as section seven and section eight. So in row number eight, this is where you give a detailed instruction on how you're going to conduct your alternative assessment. Okay, so uh, we're having about five minutes more to finish. I hope that uh, participant will be able to fill up this and send me the link. And don't forget, for those of you uh, who want me to assist in giving you feedback, give me your, uh, share your link with me. And then please don't forget to set the setting to anyone with link can assess and put up, put also your phone number so that I can communicate with you after this. Okay. Uh, I open up to any question that you want to ask uh, while I'm making copy. Eh? I want to copy this to so that I can contact later. And then there's another one, Dr. Easy Han. All right. Okay, before I stop, let us look at this. Uh, I share this because Dr. Swami and Dr. Easy Han has uh, put up in the in the chat. Yes, before I close this session. Okay, let's make a quick uh, look. Okay, this is by Dr. Suhaimi. Yeah? Okay, responsible consumerism, the costly outcome. Eh? Construct responsible consumerism with sustainable development approaches in different aspects of consumption. Construct responsible consumerism. Okay. Catering for consumption, customer protection. So learning outcome. Collaborate with others and apply knowledge of business study in social responsible manner. Okay. The domain, the learning domain is psychomoto. Okay. So Dr. Swami, this one. Uh, is this learning outcome or number one, is it cater for cognitive, psychomotor or affective? For this one, select one. Uh, I'm putting here just to give a guide, but uh, please refer back to your uh, cost learning outcome. Uh, is it cater for all these three or only one? Because like in UMT, for each learning outcome, uh, we cater for one type of uh, domain. 
So if you can adjust this, uh, just P1. Okay, so now P1, psychomotor P1. That means it's just their perception. So that means uh, we don't expect them to have a very proficient uh, skill set. Their ability to perceive things. So if you can elaborate on the domain of learning for P1 over here, for the row number four, okay, uh, in terms of the proficiency or the skill set that is the student should able to obtain okay, from this learning outcome. Okay, description, ah, right here. Description of the domain, sorry. Learner would benefit from intermediate to advanced knowledge, responsible, sustainable development. <clears throat> All right. Different aspect of consumption. Customer protection. Okay, these are the things that they are able to gain uh, based on the psychomotor P1 eh, perception. Okay, learning activity, they are doing case study. Okay, it is aligned and suitable. They discuss real world because case study will allow them to perceive, to have the perception. So suitable for P1. Okay, group discussion. Okay, so far this activity allows them to attain that particular skill set. Okay, so the next task is, Dr. Swami, if you can fill up your assessment activity. So your learning activity is aligned and enables the student to gain that particular skill set. So the next step now is to suggest what is the alternative assessment activity that you are trying to do to assess the skill set of the student based on the intended learning outcome. All right, and how are you going to conduct the task. So if you can fill up, then I can have a look and uh, make comments to you later. Okay, we are able to see one. Dr. Izihan, uh, maybe I will contact you afterwards. But don't forget, please put in your phone number uh, inside your, uh, your file so that uh, I have the phone number and I can contact with you later. All right, so just to recap before I hand over back to Dr. Wirawani. <clears throat> so just to highlight some of the measuring tools that you can do, apart from rubric, you can do a checklist. You can do anecdotal notes and you can also do rating scale. So rubric is one, but uh, there are also other measuring tools that you can use. So as a summary, uh, you can see the alternative assessment is used to measure applied proficiency, what they are able to do or what they, are, they cannot do. It's not just about how much they know about that particular thing. And educators can select appropriate and suitable alternative assessment that caters to measure the intended learning outcome. And must remember, it must be based on a certain criteria. That is what we call a human judgment. You generate the assessment criteria, develop a rubric, and you can assess. And to, to inform about rubric, uh, you can also uh, develop using certain tools. Uh, I have certain lecturer who asked me, can we use ChatGPT to generate rubrics? By all means, if you can do it, do so. Okay, But again, don't forget, you need to scrutinize back the rubric that has been developed by ChatGPT. Okay? You use ChatGPT to assist you. Okay, but don't depend 100% on chat GPT because only you know whether what are the relevant things 
they can suggest and you need to analyze back, tune so that your rubric that you develop really able to evaluate the student's proficiency of that particular skill sets inside the learning outcome. Right? So with this, thank you very much again. Of, uh, thank you, IIUM. Thank you to all participants uh, who joined this uh, webinar come workshop. And again, if you have any question, please do so contact me uh, through my handphone. Okay. And for those of you who submitted the, the link of the file that you share, please don't forget to put in your phone number so that I can communicate with you later. And for those of you after this workshop finish, you can also share the link through my WhatsApp so that uh, you give me the chance to assist in developing your alternative assessment. So with this, uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Uh, salam sejahtera. So I hand over this to, doc, to, to you, Dr. Wirawani. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shariza. It's very interesting, very, uh, very uh, many things we learn. I surely have questions, but I will text you, yeah, doctor. Uh, perhaps uh, we can also Dr. invite... Dr. Wirawani, sorry. Yes? Uh, wait, wait, let me check. I'm afraid that my, my speaker is out. I cannot listen to you. Oh. Uh... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh -oh. Maybe I need to change this. Okay, can you test again? Uh, can you hear me? All right, all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was saying thank you. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I surely have questions for you, doctor, but I will text you later. Uh, perhaps uh, we can invite you again for rubric uh, development. I think many of us have, have uh, problems with designing rubric, especially for psychomoto and also affective. Uh, 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 I also have problem, especially with, I think, uh, uh, affective domain. So thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, everyone. Perhaps we can have a group photo. Uh, those who are still here, kindly uh, turn on your, your video, your camera, so that we can take a group photo. Uh, yes, inshallah, Dr. Azihan. We will call Dr. Shahriza again for rubric development. <laughs> um, a lot of things we learn. Okay, mm, so we can take another lagi, nak buka camera. Um, okay, so we take photo, yeah. Ramai dah keluar ni. Oh, tadi ada 50 lebih, 60. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, okay, thank you. Let us end our uh, session today with a reciting. Tasbih Pafara Wasura to us. Thank you so much, ya, Dr. Shariza. Kami jemput lagi tau. Okay, yeah? insyaAllah, insyaAllah. Terima kasih, Terima kasih. semua. Ha. Ha. Ma maaf kalau ada apa sebarang kekurangan di pihak saya. Uh, saya pun minta maaf juga kalau ada kekurangan dari pihak kami. Terima kasih all participants for your participation. ya, Active participation. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Good day. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Terima kasih banyak ya. Nanti datang lagi ya. Terima kasih.